All right, guys, I am back. I got more gas for my welder, and I went ahead and started finish welding up the rest of that up. Still a few pinholes, I have to go back through. I need to cut a piece for the inside up here because I blew too big of a hole. But I'm gonna get that welding once I start making the floorboards. What most people are waiting for. So right now I'm working on a temple, paper template right now. Uh, so the floorboard is gonna be two section. The front uh, and then main floorboard. This part was originally part of the firewall that was cut out. Comes out about two inches down through here. And the uh, floor pan actually lays on top of this about an inch you can see actually. There's a line right here about an inch over onto it. So I have to get this exact fit exactly. This one I gotta make sure I do a really good job uh, because I am going to be doing a butt weld all the way around the top and I'm probably switch out for bigger gauge uh, like um, 0.3 instead of uh, the smaller stuff because I'm going to 18 gauge. Um, manufacturer originally was about 20 gauge for the floor but I want it thicker just to be on the safe side, that's what a lot of people it seems like they go to is 18 gauge for the floor. So I'm just gonna do that, plus I have the steel. So the hard part to this one is gonna be getting this corner just right to match up there. And then what it does actually, since it was part of the firewall, actually connects to back here. So I had to split this, so that's gonna weld up here, and that's gonna weld down there to help support it. So uh, I didn't videotape me making that because I didn't think that'd be that fun and exciting. So I'm just gonna have a lot more cutting, try to get this fit perfectly, then I'll put on some steels, bend it up, hopefully get that to work. So let's do it. After I bend it, I had a lot of issues with my uh, uh, my breaker, uh, and it just it wouldn't bend the 18 gauge steel that all that good. So I ended up cutting up into here a little bit so I can get down in here better. Like I said before, this ain't a show car. I want this to be safe and secure, and I don't want to be spending 10 hours, 20 hours designing a floorboard for it. So I'm gonna go with an overlap i know it's not the cleanest look but it's gonna be tight waterproof i'm gonna pull out a seam sealer on it and no one's gonna see it because after this is there's gonna be installation carpet and so i'm i'm not worried about it it's, it's what i'd like to do no but it's what i feel comfortable with that i can do and make sure i do a good result with it i uh, could have loved to get original floorboards and everything put them all in but it's that's just too much work for this car it'll never be worth that money ever again so so what i'm going to do here i am going to go ahead though and put a slight bend over to, for this to overlap here so this will actually sit a little bit further back and flush with it then uh just straighten this all up there is a gap here but i do have the metal extra i made this left extra so i can bend it over get the exact fit I want to it and be able to weld that all up. So this corner is the only thing I'm a little iffy about. I don't know how close it is to the original. looks like it might need to try and bend it further down here. I'll have to it in the back enough so I can move it back and forth. I didn't cut too much away on that side yet. Um, so yeah, um, it's going to Take over the bead roller. I'm not gonna show it. You guys seen the bead roller? I'm just gonna run through it real quick, making an outline for it. And we'll go from there.
All right, it seems a little strong in the garage right now. It's getting nice and dark out, rainy. So I went ahead, put a rust encapsulator. As you see, I used regular, and I, uh, let me show you, yeah, regular rust encapsulator. I sprayed it. Then the cavity goes up actually pretty far up in there. So I had some of this internal frame rust coating. Uh, I cleaned the hose out, but it, has, it comes with a little hose. I just stuck it up there, sprayed it all. It's a lot more runnier, so it seeps into all the cracks. So that would be able to encapsulate better. And in the video, you probably saw a lot more stuff coming out because I went over here and I sprayed in some of these holes down in here to help run it down. And you can see it's piles piling up for how runny it is. So I'm pretty sure I got all that nice and coated and protect it. So I won't be able to weld that spot in tonight. Set it for another night. Well, I gotta let that dry, sand, then the top, clean it up good, get off the paint that might have got onto it. Uh, and then drill some holes from some spot welds onto it, and then hopefully that fits right onto it. And then we'll move on to the second part of the floorboard. Okay, as you can see, my saw my other videos, I did have an extra floor leaning against the wall that came out of a Datsun 510 that I had that I bought that had tons of Bondo. It was hit, the frame was twisted too bad. I couldn't repair it, it was, it was just it was, it was trash, but I took a lot of parts off of it and sold a lot. So I was hoping to be able to use some of this floor if I needed it. Um, so this is the part that I was thinking about using. Let's take this. Now, the reason I decided to try, I mean, I'm still not sure. I'm just testing if it's a little less I could use. I would like to. The only reason I thought about it, because this seems this is nice and solid. Since the metal I have up here is all janked up. And then this part right here, this, if I line that up, the other holes originally over there. There's a huge, can't see it, but huge gap right there. Uh, of course, this one floorboard did come out of automatic. So maybe it is wider because of that. I mean, it was so rusted right there. I Before, I can't remember. I tried looking on the other side what it looks like. But it looks like everything lines up. So either my angle angle through here is too steep and it has to flatten out more this way and come down here uh, I don't know I mean it's level all the way up to it so it's not dipping down that's what I was afraid of and it's really hard because I have this nice this slight of a curve right here that leads up to it I mean I make this is just if I up. Uh, uh, hmm. Sorry to tell from there. I, mean, I could probably do that and just fit it in like that and not worry about it. And just redrill these holes and then weld this up here. Just give it a little clamp it down, drill it, and I can bend it. Problem is see uh won't be going up this far though. I have to still gotta cut this back a little bit. Probably quarter, quarter of an inch. Still comes off from there. Uh, actually, that might not work. Too, might, might be too big of a gap right there. Don't know. Mm, this is 
be the biggest patch I've made for it so far. Instead of a whole bunch of little ones. So I'm gonna just toy around with it, fitting. This is where I'm at now, doing some test fitting. So, um, 18 gauge is a pain in the butt. Doesn't work well on a Harbor Freight uh, metal break. Uh, so I tried to get a bend to get the lip I needed. I ended up pretty much doing it all by hand, and that was not not fun. Uh, as you saw from before, this is another day than originally did. I just did. The next and the bead roller is happy with that. And I put a little lip, raise this section up here because it's going to lay flush on top of here. And I put one back here so it's going to lay flush on that. So now I just got to take some measurements, make sure I get this nice flat with it. And then since this has to bend upward, I'm going to go underneath and make some marks underneath, try to get this to bend or what I have to cut to get the fit up there in that lip. Uh, good and those two big holes right here. I don't know if I'll just replace those with this gauge or just go a little bit lower than it But I mean one thing is I mean it's hard to bend since I did put the It put strength in here doing the bead roller. So it might be a little bit of pain in the butt to get the bend out, but we'll uh, take a look A little other detail stuff I have to do uh, There's a lip for this right here So I do need a notch and cut this out to make sure it fits flush with it and I still haven't cut the uh, under. Yeah, let's see that. Oh, there we go. That thing is very solid. There's a little bit of a bow in it from bead rolling it. I probably should have took a hammer first and just uh, with a round and just hit slowly, try to set, uh, get the metal to stretch so it gives some extra in the groove without warping the metal. But it ain't too bad. I'm pretty, I'm happy with that. So I do need to go in and clean this up. And I'm guessing I will end up having just to, I'm just going to cut this straight off here and remove this and weld uh, from the new there. I was thinking about just cutting that out and let it sit on there. But since I'm that far, might as well do it. So this is the big issue, right? This is the hard part, I think, here because it does dip down. And I'm up to here with it. So either I get to cut fit right in here perfectly weld it all the way across I just think I should probably since it's up to here I probably will just replace it and put the new holes overlap um, I don't have to drill holes now I can always get the bracket since I am going with a different transmission you can't use the same bracket for it actually transmission bracket so I could just wait and drill the holes then and then figure out exactly where I want it uh, that might be a little bit easier but yep yeah, that corner is going to be the issue the hardest part i think but so far i think it's coming along slow but it's working
right, guys. Hope you've been enjoying it so far. Um, let's go ahead and go over what I done good and what I did really bad and things that's going to need a lot of fixing. Now, it's very cold out. Well, it's probably the coldest day we've had so far. It's low 20s. So very cold in the garage. So I kept the garage shut for most of it, but I needed to open it up. The fumes are getting a little heavy. The mask can only do so much. So I'll show you how I've been welding it in. So the, uh, the plug welds, uh, very happy with them. Uh, I need to grind them down a little bit more. I didn't, I didn't get the smaller grinder out, so make sure I don't eat too much around it. Just want to hit the tops of it. Very solid. Uh, so I need to go back in, so I'll tack weld all this here. Finish tack weld some of it down there. Do got to still do that. So happy with these, this, and then back here. What I'm not happy with is what I did really bad is this back here. Uh, I did put a piece of brass back there. It still didn't blow to through, so it was blowing through. Lowered the voltage and the wire speed, see if that would help. The gaps are, some of these are just, they were too big. And this don't, I couldn't, um, I was using these type panel clamps, they call them. We got these. Uh, the gap is still wider than what this was. I was trying to keep it as thick as this here. That's the recommended for 0 0.30 wire, but uh, I had it still too big. So I don't see this that bad of an issue actually, because I'm still debating on what engine I want to put in the thing. I mean, I do have an engine and a cool setup for it, but like, do I want to go through all this work and only have 120 horsepower engine in it. I mean, that's probably, that's more than plenty for the car, yes. But is it plenty for me? Eh, I don't wanna get bored with it too quickly. So maybe this is a sign. Cause any other, a lot of the other engines I'm gonna put into it, I'll have to cut the transmission tunnel and raise it up a little bit probably. So maybe I'm not gonna worry about this right now. I'll just leave this blank because all this is welded up good. So I'll finish welding this up. Probably will show you that guys. Then primer it. Then since I do share a garage with my wife, she does want me parking for winter. I'm supposed to get hit with snow pretty good next week. So I got the day and tomorrow. I wanted to finish this up. Then I got to turn the car around, push it far back against the wall. So I'm gonna work actually, I'm just gonna go ahead and enjoy it. I'm gonna work on the front of the car and work my way back. So I'm gonna work on the passenger floor, uh, be able to work on that. I think I'm gonna to have to get a heater for this garage, especially if I'm trying to hit my deadline for spring. And then by midwinter, I'll decide what engine I'm officially gonna go with and drop that in the beginning of spring is the plan. So I'm gonna finish getting this all tacked in the rest of the way, primer it. Then I have to turn the car around and reorganize the garage and make sure I have plenty of space for the winter time. Um, so I might, I don't know if we'll cut the video off here because it's very long. I spent a long time on this. I mean, this is the biggest, I've never made a floor pan like this before, or this, I've never done this much welding before. I obviously can tell how bad the welds are, but I'm rambling. So this is probably the end of the video. So hey, you want, if you guys like what I'm doing, give me a thumbs up, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, if you have any ideas, pointers for the way it is, because I'm going to leave that. I'm, that, I'm not going to touch that now because yeah, I don't know. Let me know what your guys' opinions are. All right, guys. Peace out.